the journey of life. Right, so, yeah, we're here tonight with uh, Anthony B. So, <clears throat> could you uh, introduce yourself quickly? Yaga, yaga, yo. Anthony B, reggae singer out of Jamaica. I'm right here in France tonight. Where is this in France? Voreal. Voreal, France. November 23rd, 2018. Give thanks to the year. Alright, so um, how, how did you feel tonight? How was the show? Joyful. Um, I'm feeling excited. It was excellent. The people enjoy themselves, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Last month you were in Paris. Yeah. And, uh, was it better in Paris or Well, it's a big, here? it's a bigger venue. It's a more like, you understand, so. But when, once the people enjoy themselves, that's, that's how we look at a show. All right. Yeah, so the, once the crowd can say, if it's 10 people or it's a thousand people, we want the 10 people to feel the same like we make the thousand people feel. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I thought the show was good, but um, you didn't perform Fire Upon Rome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I you didn't hear your favorite song, so <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Because I, I, I sang like uh, uh, 3,000 to, to 3,000 something songs, and I got like, what? Ten albums, so <laughs> it's hard sometimes to make a decision. You know? Yeah, yeah. But so you like, know, the next thing, the next show I, I see you, I'm <laughs> gonna make sure I sing Fire Up Rome. Okay. Yeah, well, you just and Fire Up Rome, people pal and him scissors and go. Black people want go home. I'm on Zion and the righteous throne. You go, yo. So we don't like to disappoint the fans. And she come out tonight to the concert. <laughs> and she did not hear fire up our room. So I'm singing it for her now. Okay? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So but there's also another thing I didn't like. Uh, there's, when you perform the song uh, on the Think Twice Rhythm. Yeah. Like the keyboardist was not playing it right. You okay. kind of missed some keys. Mr. Keyboard, <laughs> my keyboard player is not here, but he's going to watch this interview. You hear? I didn't say it, she said it. So it's a fans and it's keyboard player. Well, that's music, I know. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about live music. It's a live music, you know, it's spontaneous. Yeah. So sometimes it can be perfect. Yeah. Sometimes something. And that's the thing about live music. Yeah, and exactly. if you were in Jamaica, would you would you have performed the same the same set that you did tonight, or would it be different? Like yeah, it would depends upon the show. Like uh, you understand because this is a club show tonight, and it's a different audience. So if we're doing a club show in Jamaica, because I, I, ninety percent of the show in Jamaica right now, it depends upon like a rebel salute is a culture show. Yeah, you understand. So this is how Jamaica run. A club show would be like a dance hall show. Yeah, in Jamaica, right. you don't have a club show, it's going to be like a culture show. Hmm. You understand? So that's the difference in Jamaica now. If we're going to have a culture show, it's going to be outdoor. I remember we don't have no, yeah, right. we don't have no cold time. So. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, different. So, but club now, because in Jamaica, we, we think club is more dance hall. Right. So club is where people go to party. So if I'm going to perform it, I would do more dance hall mm. stuff. Yeah, but right. if I do a dance hall show tonight, then, then you would be complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you would be saying, I hear none of the songs that <laughs> Anthony well, will come and sing all the dance hall in France. Huh? Well, it depends. So, this depends is it. Like, so, I yeah. know you're going to come to the next concert because you want to hear Fire Park. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so, um, in 1995, you released your first album. Yeah. Uh, so Many Things. Yeah. And it was produced by uh, Richard Bell. Bell, Star Trek. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, how was it to work with him? Like a father to a son, you know. Right. Yeah, so give thanks, Bobo Bell, big up yourself, Star Trail, big up. Yeah, man, cause he was like the platform. He gave me that platform so you could have an Anthony to B today. All right. So he was like the father I never got, you know. Yeah, yeah. You, you started, uh, like when you released your first album, you, you, you played, uh, you performed at Sting the same year. Yeah. So how was it to you, like, how, how did you feel? Because it was like very, like Sting is, it's like a big festival yeah, in it, Jamaica. It, it was a big, it, it, it was a big thing. Up till today, it's still a big thing because Sting is a dancehall show. Mm. And that time, I, I, I was like the first Rastafarian artist, culture artist to ever get a break at Sting. Mm. I understand? And the next artist to do what I did is Kranix. Right. There is no other Rasta artist who has ever come and take the night. Right. You understand? So this is it. So 
the only artist who used to do those things was like Bojo Bantan and Capitan who was already big. Yeah. And they convert to the faith. Yeah. You understand? So what we as young Rasta artists so it was a big thing because mm. Sting is not somewhere where people expect a culture artist to right. go and create an impact. You understand? Because Sting is where all the hardcore people come out. They want to hear hardcore dance and they want to see artists clash and cuss <laughs> and buckle and you understand? So it's like a battlefield, like a saint going on a battlefield to talk to soldiers to tell them don't shoot and don't kill. That's <laughs> So that's what it is. And so I give thanks and to show that the music continues because in this generation, we see new Rastafarian artists coming, new yeah. generation coming. Yeah. So that's the greatest part of the world. Yeah, and then in Fire Upon Rome, you, you, you name like song, uh, names of people like that are yeah. controversial in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. like and the politicians. Yeah, growing up, we never hear about who is the problem. Yeah. So in our time, singers would say Mr. Jacket and Ty. I would say Big Man. So these were the terms we grew up with. Who was really the oppressor? Mm. Big Man, who is Big Man? Who is Mr. Jacket? Who is Mr. Ty? A man who dress up in a suit. <laughs> so this is why I say I need to... We are from the generation that we like to clarify things. Mm. So for me, the oppressors in Jamaica is the politicians because the people suffer because of the policies that right. is created. You understand? And in Jamaica, we don't have a racial class problem. Mm. We have a uptown, up downtown. So it's a right. classism. You understand? So yeah. on the downtown side, you might have white, brown, pink, yellow, purple. But you're, you're, you're downtown. So yeah. <laughs> you're just a part of the, the lower class. Yeah. Uptown, you still have black and white and pink and purple. So yeah. it's like a line you have to try and make it over that side. Right. You understand? <laughs> yeah, so we, it's quite a few of us really make success and still stay hmm. on this side. Right. You understand? So yeah. that is a thing that you have to have that rebel art and that hmm. rebel mind because once that money reach you, <laughs> You're gonna jump over the other side. Yeah, yeah right. Understand? So, yeah. So that's why I sang a song like Fire Power Room because I'm that kind of rebel. Yeah. And uh, on your first album, you also sang uh, the song uh, Low the Herb. Yeah. And like a couple of years ago, they decriminalized uh, ganja yeah, in Jamaica. Jamaica yeah. And what do you think about that? Well, it's a, it's a big win. It's a big win because the only problem we have as Rastafarian in Jamaica is a little herbs and you could be smoking a little herbs a police pull up on the corner and you get arrested mm. then you have problem to travel mm. because you can't get a visa you can't go to the embassy maybe you have a career maybe you're an artist you're a painter you're a runner mm. maybe you were just 15 16 when you get arrested now you're 20. Your, ca your career become popular around the world and many artists can't travel yeah. because they can't get the documents because they were arrested already you have a criminal record what was the criminal record marijuana <laughs> yeah so right. that's so you understand yeah. for me that's a great move because now a jamaican who smoke a little herbs don't have to worry now that he will be criminalized that he cannot go to an embassy to travel again mm. you understand so that's yeah. a big step for me right you understand i've been arrested two times in my life and the only time i was arrested only for marijuana yeah because i don't do nothing else so right. for me now to be in jamaica now i can sit there and the police roll up and i can talk to him and yeah. he talk to me and he go go his ways because i got no guns my friends don't deal with violence but all my friends smoke weed all right yeah you understand so, yeah, understand. so yeah. for me it's a win all right so you started singing in church when you were a kid yeah and then you when you converted to rastafarianism what did your parents think about it? Well, I, if you listen to my second album, I sing a song called Mama Forsake You. If you remember that song, Mama Forsake You, Papa Forsake You. In my time, like you no know, Rasta is cool. Yeah. It's cool to be a Rasta. You could find somebody work at the airport and mm -hmm. they got dreadlocks. Maybe they don't even know nothing about Celestia. Yeah. Maybe they don't even know nothing about the name Rasta Farad. Right. Yeah. They, they, they would say, oh, they Rasta, oh, no, man, I, I don't, I just grow. So now the dreadlocks now become popular. Mm -hmm. It's cool now. Yeah. When we were growing up, 
Dreadlocks is madman. Okay? Yeah. The Rasta man, the dreadlocks is madman. If you smoke weed, you're mad. That's every parent in Jamaica tell their kids that. From you smoke weed, you're mad. Yeah. You understand? But so this is all I was in I could give you a story. Nineteen ninety four. I wasn't performing and I, and but I went to the show with Garnet Singh. Re right. Reggae Sunfest. And my auntie come from America. Hmm. Come to Jamaica. She don't see me for like five years. And I see my auntie. I was in the van with Garnet Silk and see my auntie. And so excited, God, that's my auntie. I don't see. And I open the van, run out to my auntie. My auntie scream out to me like, Jesus Christ, me never you're mad. He mad, he mad. He. This is how my auntie look at me. Yeah. I was looking that I'm in the van with one of the biggest singers in the world. I'm now getting the opportunity to get a career in music. And my auntie's looking at me like, is a man mad? <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So this is yeah. how people view. But it, it used to be worse, like you've heard of the current when I, gardens. When I burn, yeah. I burn and hear about yeah. the, 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 the rougher time. Because yeah. I hear from Emmanuel, I'm a Bobo Shanti, and the leader of the Bobo Shanti mm. is Emmanuel. Prince yeah. Emmanuel built his first tabernacle in where it's called Tivoli Garden today. Mm. It used to call Bakawal. You understand? They send police in the night and they shoot hundreds of Rasta. Yeah. Who they couldn't trim their lack of. Yeah, like understand? Coral Gardens. Yeah, too. so Emmanuel, this is how we move mm. to Bull Bay. Yeah, alright. And th that, that's, th that's where you see all those places built downtown. That's what was called. That was all Rasta community. Yeah. Do you, do you still go to these Rasta communities? Yeah, yeah we don't leave Bobo Hill. That's the only thing we have. We mm. still, that's the only place we still hold on to because yeah. the land was granted to Emmanuel by Queen Elizabeth. Mm. So it can't be moved, it can't be sold, nobody can take it away. You understand? And so we keep it. In 1998, you, you said that uh, you thought Seven Seas was probably going to be one of your best albums. Do you mm. still think the same today? <laughs> no, because <laughs> I'm, st I'm working on one of them. A album right now that I'm coming with. I right. feel it just like how I feel my first album. Mm. That's what I say to everybody. When I go into the studio and I start records, you, you can find times where you're just in a momentum mm. and you find times you're just not into that mood. Right. But you understand? So I guess I'm into that momentum, that mindset, that feeling right now. Mm. So I'm doing all the experiment first behind the scene before I come up. And which artists are you, which uh, musicians and producers are you working with for your upcoming album? Well, I also already met enough of the track, Kirk oh. and Firehouse, Danny them. Okay. You understand? And Fata, Fata is, okay. is going to mix the album. All right. So. Uh, where do you plan to go within the next month? Do you keep on touring? They are Toulouse tomorrow yeah. night. Oh, tomorrow. Who <laughs> oh, they Toulouse? Toulouse. I would go back to France December 7 or 8th. Yes, in Avignon and Sosem. Avignon and Sosem. And um, Amsterdam and Maastricht. Okay. Italian. Toulouse is really nice. Yeah, I love Toulouse, man. You already been there? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah man, I like Toulouse. Big up all the Toulouse fans, then, right? <laughs> um, uh, Buj Banton is soon coming out of jail. Yeah. Do you think you're going, going to make some songs with him when he comes out of jail? Because like everybody's like trying to plan something. No, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't plan nothing with Bojo. We just nothing. feel like Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. December 8th is our Christmas this year. <laughs> you understand? That's how happy we are. All right. So t I, I know what it is to be in his position. Mm. So right now we can't plan nothing. I just want to know him out and uh, free. Liberate and whatever he say, that's mm. what good for me. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So if he say he need to do this, I need to do this. I got no pre-plan. I'm just happy to know that he's gonna be out. Mm. You understand? Yeah. It, it, which artist of the new um, reggae generation do you, do you like or if, dance of? I, I like every artist, man. Like, but which which one <laughs> is like, the best? I like. Every, <laughs> no, you see. <laughs> the best now is up to you as the fans. I'm an artist. I can't say this artist is better than this artist. 
because I know music and this artist might have a big song at the moment and that artist don't have a big song but next two years that artist have a big song and you don't even hear about this artist again. Mm. So the game is like that. So the best that is up to you as the fans to judge. But I like every artist because I've been an artist myself, I can tell you, 90% of us come from nothing. Mm. All right. That means when we get the break, we feel that I'm out. We mm. change families, we change lives. Mm. You understand? Not just regular artists, dancehall artists. Many artists are sufferers. The best thing happened to them is that they get a break in the music. Right. You understand? So I, per, I don't fight artists. I okay. don't judge artists. I leave the fans to do that. You kind of had like a clash with Capleton in the, in the night, late no, 90s. We don't have, no, we don't have clash. We have words words exchange <laughs> <laughs> we don't clash in music you understand we have word exchange because we might have opinions different opinions okay and we are all rebels so when rebels get together it's like i'm saying if you see three jamaican having a conversation you might think we're gonna fight you understand mm, I... yeah standing in a foreign country three jamaican outside talking person looking through the building he's gonna call the police that hey they're gonna kill each other cause this is how we talk jamaican talk hard to each other it don't mean nothing mm. at the end of the day you understand you have brothers talking to brother yo tell up, 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 up. and they're having a conversation <laughs> you understand this is jamaican expression is very aggressive all right so it's different from many culture okay. people more french is more subtle than loving and jamaica yo what go on you understand? To you it sounds like, whoa, this is like somebody will fight, but they don't mean nothing. Mm. You understand? So sometimes word exchange, you know, it don't, you understand? Cape Town is my good friend, okay. a youth that I love, you know. Mm. What uh, other genre of music do you listen to apart from reggae music and dancehall music? I listen to popular music, you understand? So I might be listening to the radio and hear a song. If it's a pop song and I like it, I will listen. Maybe find the artist's album and go listen to the artist's album. So I'm a lo I, I love music. Mm. So I try to stay in tune with music. I try to listen to what's going on. Because the music don't change because we change it. Mm. We change because music and fashion is like the same thing. You understand? You wake up tomorrow morning and the people is dressing different. Mm. They're dancing different. That they're in a different mood. Mm. So they don't want to hear these kind of beats. They want to hear these kind of beats. Mm. And that's what keeps us in the game. It's right. when we learn to adapt to mm. changes. Because what is constant? Change. Mm. And don't you think it's better when you play live with uh, real horns instead of keyboards and stuff like that? Because sometimes it's... It no, because I don't, I don't have a lot of horns music. Mm. So sometimes I have maybe two horns songs in my whole show. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, it's difficult. So you're going to have an arms man on the stage standing all night just to play two songs. So sometimes that's why you just use the keyboard. Right. You understand? Back in the days you now, when you used to make all those songs, if you realize, we used to make every song on section. Mm. Because those are the time when you used to. Yeah. Yeah, but right. now you don't really, there's not a lot of hand songs coming out anymore. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So it's sad, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just like I love jazz music. Okay. But you have to search for those jazz music to hear them. Mm. They, they don't come out like a hit song, like a pop song. Yeah. So it's the same thing. And, and which jazz musician do you like? Well, my own. <laughs> Monty Alexander. All ah, right. <laughs> That's the boss for me, you know? Yeah. Because right. I understand his style of jazz more than the artentic. Because yeah. I guess he's true, he's Jamaican and the way he do his stuff. All right. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you for your time. Give thanks. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks. And just one more thing. When you pick up, like, uh, Guadeloupe and, like, other part of France, you, you didn't mention Reunion Island. Have you ever been uh, there? Okay, actually, I don't remember. You see, <laughs> I just... <laughs> no, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. No, I'm just coming from I'm just coming from Reunion Island. Because I come from there. Yeah, this and I'm is just why... coming from there. So I <laughs> oh, should have... You, yeah, I was you... just there. Mauritius <laughs> and Reunion Island. So because if Reunion Island, I don't want you to feel like... Listen, Reunion Island, I love you all. 
she is problem. <laughs> <laughs> love all the women and island people and Mauritius love one or two, all the people and all the, all the part of the world. Because the problem is now, if we call out every name sometimes, it's like yeah, you, spend a, you spend a whole night calling names. <laughs> no, so everybody like... around the globe and the planet Earth, big up on yourself. You see, they are Mars, Plutus, anywhere, big up. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just joking. All right, yeah, we love, we love your vibes, man. <laughs> Thanks. All right, thanks. Bye.